top management wants to do something about code quality. Developers would benefit from doing test-driven development. So who should management give this responsibility to, to make the change? In most organizations, there are several options, and I've seen various more or less successful attempts. So which of these job roles could do it? The Scrum Master, the Line Manager, or the Tech Lead? In this video, I'm going to explain which leaders I've seen succeed in getting developers to adopt test-driven development. According to the official Scrum Guide, the Scrum Master is accountable for the Scrum team's effectiveness. And that includes coaching team members and helping them to focus on creating high-value increments that meet the definition of done. It seems like TDD would improve effectiveness and enable them to create these high-value increments. So one approach is to get the Scrum Master to coach the team into adopting TDD. The Scrum Master doesn't tell the team what to do. They coach. The main way for a team to change the way it works is through the sprint retrospective. At the retrospective, the Scrum Master can ask the right questions so the team identifies for themselves that doing TDD would improve effectiveness and they should adopt it. The Scrum Master can even suggest that doing TDD could be part of the definition of done and the team could choose to adopt that. They can put improvement initiatives into the sprint backlog for the next sprint, like all new code should be written using TDD. This all sounds great. The big problem is skill. The role of Scrum Master is quite tightly defined within the Scrum framework, and it's not a particularly technical role. The Scrum Master is not expected at any point to coach team members in how to write code. TDD is all about how you write code. The Scrum Masters who I've worked with have been lovely people with a great deal to contribute to improving teamwork and process and coaching better interactions. But introducing TDD is beyond anything they can generally achieve. They can ask the right questions, make encouraging noises when developers write tests. They can identify impediments like a slow build and flaky tests, raise these issues with management. But fundamentally, I don't think that in itself will be enough. You can put TDD in the definition of done, raise it at the retrospective, but if nobody has the skills needed to do TDD and the coding environment and the culture is not supportive to it, it's just not going to happen. The Scrum Master is not qualified to teach or mentor TDD generally, but there is a lot of other stuff that is in their job description that they're better off spending their time on. There's very little a Scrum Master can do to help developers to improve at TDD, even if they want to. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. A line manager has a lot of levers that they can pull to help a team to adopt TDD, many of which are unavailable to a Scrum Master. So perhaps they're in a better position. A line manager can hire new team members with specific skills like TDD. They can make TDD part of people's performance evaluation. And they usually have a training budget. Directly hiring people with TDD skills might seem like a good solution. And I think it would be if the hiring manager were able to find any. There aren't that many developers out there who are really skilled with TDD. And a hiring manager might not themselves be very good at identifying them. Perhaps they could fix this by using a specialist recruiter or hire contractors from a consultancy with a reputation for doing TDD. This could work. And I do know companies who've managed to staff entire departments with good developers who know some TDD. It has to be a consistent strategy across a number of years to really bear fruit though. If you've got a lot of people already working for you who aren't skilled with TDD, you'll need to upskill them. Now obviously, as a line manager, you can make it clear you expect developers to learn TDD. Put it in the performance evaluation. And when you ask people to do things, they'll listen. Some developers will work overtime, aim to learn this on their evenings and their weekends. They'll go to code retreats and meetups and conferences. And I've seen some motivated individuals learn TDD this way. To be honest, it's a bit unusual. The majority will need more than encouraging words. Perhaps that training budget? There are reputable providers advertising three or five day courses in TDD. However, these kinds of training courses just don't work. I have another video that explains why. 
Basically, my experience tells you, you can understand the theory and some of the basics from a short course like that, but it has to be combined with mentoring and coaching in your real production code. Enthusiastic beginners can seem very confident and yet waste a huge amount of time writing worthless tests, not actually doing TDD. Surely, the tech lead is the right person for the job then. The tech lead can provide the necessary mentoring and coaching. With the support of the line manager and the scrum master, they can get the developers in the team to change the way they work, to adopt TDD. That does assume your lead developers know TDD, which is not entirely a given. And if they do know TDD, they need to be able to support, coach and mentor the other developers around them. A lot of the time, the qualities that get a person to a tech lead role are not that they love coaching and mentoring others. I know many brilliant developers who are very skilled technically, but not that great at building up the people around them. I think though that experienced developers can absolutely learn those skills, but they don't suddenly begin coaching and mentoring others unless they're encouraged to do so. Scrum masters and line managers play an important role here setting expectations. What I suggest is that tech leads get some support to begin doing technical coaching part-time. Training courses in TDD may not work, but training in things like facilitating ensemble and delivering learning hours does work. And the Saman Society has these kinds of courses and loads of free materials and exercises to help tech leads to get started. Okay, who should top management ask to raise code quality and introduce TDD? Well, of all of these leaders that I've talked about, they all have a role to play, but I want to pick out the tech lead. I've seen organizations succeed with TDD and maintain high code quality through two main ways. Firstly, a consistent hiring strategy over a number of years, and secondly, through technical coaching. Of course, I've also met individual developers who've learned TDD on their own initiative, but that doesn't tend to lead to widespread change. You need skilled technical people who also have the ability to coach and mentor the people around them. That person often starts out as a tech lead and becomes a full-time technical coach. They work closely with more than one team over a period of months or years. It could be somebody brought in from outside the organization or somebody trained from within. There are lots of resources for aspiring technical coaches available via the Saman Society and videos in this channel. Technical coaches also need the support of the wider organization that they work in. Some impediments to TDD lie outside their control, in the technical infrastructure, the branching strategies, the architecture. So scrum masters and line managers need to support this change. But in my opinion, you need tech leads who do technical coaching to be successful.